Hello, today we will recap a 2015 biographical drama film, in which a struggling single mother of two children becomes a successful entrepreneur after inventing a miracle mop. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel for free because we'll upload new videos regularly. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and enjoy. The movie starts with Joy as a child, leading a happy life with her parents, grandma, stepsister Peggy, and her best friend, Jackie, who was always by her side. Even at a young age, Joy had a big dream, she wanted to create something truly amazing. As Joy grew older, she met a charming man named Anthony, who hailed from Venezuela and had a passion for singing. They eventually got married and had two children. However, their marriage ended in divorce because Joy couldn't handle Tony's laziness, and he couldn't provide for their kids. Tony had always aspired to be a famous singer, which made it tough for Joy to handle all the household responsibilities on her own. Nevertheless, Tony still cared for Joy, and even after the divorce, he continued to live in the basement of Joy's house. Joy's parents had gone through a divorce as well. Her father had left the family and married another woman. Since the divorce, Joy's mother had been battling depression and spent most of her time watching soap operas on TV. One day, Joy stumbles upon her unique invention, a dog collar that stands out from the rest. It reminds her of past pain, because her creation had been taken by another company. She couldn't patent the item in time. Back then, Joy had a job as an airline booking agent, but her employment didn't last long due to the company reducing its workforce. Joy's life takes a turn for the worse when her father, who had remarried, goes through another divorce and ends up returning to Joy's home, seeking a place to stay. Her mother is still grappling with issues stemming from her own divorce. Upon her father's arrival, he and Joy's mother immediately engage in an argument that escalates into some things being broken. Nevertheless, Joy still welcomes her father and suggests that he stay in the basement with Tony, her ex-husband. In the basement, Joy's ex-husband Tony is practicing his singing when he sees Joy's father arrive. Their encounter leads to an argument, and to keep the peace, Joy has to place a roll of tissue as a boundary between Tony and her father's sleeping areas. In a brief flashback, we see how Joy and Tony initially met at a party. Joy was captivated by Tony's singing performance, and they struck up a conversation. Tony shared his strong desire to become a famous singer, which intrigued Joy even more because it was a stark contrast to her rather routine life. This fascination with Tony's dreams led Joy to fall in love with him, eventually leading to their dating and marriage. From the very beginning of Joy and Tony's marriage, Joy's father, Rudy, had a disliking for Tony. One night, Joy confides in her friend, Jackie, sharing various household problems. A few days later, Rudy decides to try a matchmaking agency because he feels lonely. He is then introduced to a wealthy widow named Trudy. Meanwhile, Joy's mother is in a panic as there's a drain issue in her room, causing water to overflow. While all this unfolds, Rudy and Trudy are planning their first date. During their meeting, Rudy and Trudy felt a strong connection and decided to embark on a romantic relationship. To celebrate this new chapter, Trudy invites Rudy for a trip on her private boat. She also asks Rudy to bring his family along for the occasion. The following day, while they were enjoying themselves, the boat suddenly tilted a bit, causing Joy to accidentally break a glass. Joy then proceeds to clean up the broken glass, but during the process, she injures her hand with the glass shards. This incident leaves Joy acting strangely, leaving those around her confused, thinking she might be just exhausted. When Joy falls asleep, she experiences a sudden inspiration. She even feels as if she encounters a younger version of herself, who possesses the potential to create something new. Little Joy reminds the adult Joy that she has wasted the past 17 years of her life. Joy abruptly wakes up and insists that Tony needs to move out as they are divorced, and it's not healthy for them to share the same house. She conveys the same message to her father. Joy urges her father to find a new place because he's no longer married to her mother, but Rudy is reluctant to leave. So, Joy makes a proposal to her father. She asks him to assist her in securing a loan from Trudy. Joy's hope is that Trudy will invest in her business. After Rudy chats with Trudy, Joy is then invited to explain her idea. Apparently, Joy has the idea to create a mop called the Miracle Mop, 
a mop that isn't squeezed by hand but uses a mechanical lever. It can even wring itself out. But they are still confused by Joy's explanation, which is in the form of images. So Joy has to create a prototype with makeshift tools at the workshop to make her concept clear. But securing an investment from Trudy isn't as straightforward as she had initially imagined. Trudy is keen to assess Joy's business acumen. She poses a few questions. First, Trudy inquires about where Joy went to school. Second, she asks about Joy's academic achievements. And third, Trudy presents a scenario in which there's only Joy, her business partner, and a gun in a room. She asks if Joy would shoot her business rival. Joy provides answers to these questions, including the third, stating that she would take the gun. After this discussion, Trudy is finally ready to invest her money as capital for Joy's business. Joy starts producing her mop. She then attempts to sell it and offers it to every household appliance store. She prices her mop at $20, but some stores decline her offer and even respond with insults, refusing to stock her product. Despite being the first mop designed for greater ease of use, Joy's mop is seen as unprofitable in the business world. Store owners prefer customers to make multiple purchases rather than buy it once for $20. Then Joy attempts to sell it herself in a supermarket parking lot, with her daughter and Jackie by her side. Unfortunately, no one makes a purchase, and she is asked to leave by the security personnel. Joy's struggle doesn't go unnoticed by Tony, who begins to empathize with her hard work. In a gesture of support, Tony invites Joy to meet with his close friend, Neil Walker, a television station and home shopping event manager. In Neil's office, he asks Joy to present her product and demonstrate how the mop functions. Initially, some of Neil's colleagues appear to find Joy's invention useless, but they eventually start showing appreciation. After hearing Joy's product explanation, Neil becomes genuinely interested, and requests Joy to produce 50,000 mops for sale on one of his television programs. Joy makes the decision to seek additional funding from Trudy. Initially, Trudy declines due to Joy's outstanding debts. But after several hours of consideration, Trudy proposes that Joy's house be used as collateral, ultimately reaching an agreement to lend her the money once more. Joy promptly produces the requested quantity of mops for Neil. After some days, Joy's entire family assembles to watch her product advertised on television, hoping for strong sales. Unfortunately, after the product is promoted, it fails to attract any customers. Joy is deeply disheartened because she invested all her money into the business. She contacts Neil, seeking compensation because he had instructed her to produce 50,000 mop units. However, the contract lacks a provision specifying a full replacement for unsold items. Following negotiations, the company agrees to replace only one-third of the capital. Despite this setback, Joy remains undeterred. She visits Neil's office to request another opportunity, vowing to personally promote her product on television. At first, Neil has reservations about Joy's abilities because she's not accustomed to being in front of the camera. But he eventually agrees to Joy's request. She is then taken to the dressing room for makeup. But Joy feels uncomfortable with it and prefers to appear as her authentic self. The home shopping event begins. Joy appears nervous, struggling to find her words. Neil becomes anxious as she remains silent. Suddenly, a call comes in from a customer interested in the mop. It turns out the caller is Jackie, pretending to be a customer to prompt Joy to discuss her product. In an instant, Joy becomes happy and effectively promotes the mop. Unexpectedly, orders for Joy's product reach 47,000 units. Joy's joy gets mixed with sorrow when her beloved grandma passes away. This loss makes Joy really sad because she is closer to her grandma than her own parents. To make things worse, after her grandma's funeral, Joy faces another problem. The supplier who provides materials for her mop raises the prices, taking advantage of the mop's success on TV. Rudy gets upset about the price increase and sends Peggy to handle the issue without Joy's knowledge. Rudy claims that Peggy wants to help Joy's business, but instead, Peggy makes the situation worse. Joy has to visit the vendor herself. But she can't meet the factory owner, only the manager. Joy expresses her dissatisfaction with the sudden price hike by the owner. Unfortunately, even after negotiations, the factory owner refuses to lower the price. This puts Joy in a difficult spot. 
Joy becomes suspicious and wants to see the production machine to find out why the price has increased. However, they don't allow her access. Feeling uneasy, she goes to the restroom and stumbles upon a ventilation hole. She crawls through it and discovers it leads to the production area. To her shock, she finds that the company has secretly patented her work without her knowledge. The company claims the patent as their own and has been selling the product without Joy's knowledge. They accuse Joy of trespassing and call the police, resulting in her arrest. Fortunately, her father comes to her rescue and gets her released. Joy tries to take the case to court but is unsuccessful, as she loses the legal battle. She has to pay royalties for every mob she sells, which angers Trudy and Rudy. Her debt continues to grow. Rudy thinks Joy is responsible for losing Trudy's money. Under pressure, Joy has to sign a bankruptcy statement at Trudy's insistence to protect her investments. This severs their business relationship. Even though her circumstances are deteriorating, and she has lost support, Joy remains determined. She makes a symbolic change by cutting her hair and embarks on a journey to study civil law, copyright law, and patents. Utilizing her research, Joy discovers intricate distinctions between her design and the patented design of the company. She also unearths facts about the date when her product's copyright was registered. It is revealed that Joy's creation was copyrighted much earlier, dating back to when she initially borrowed money from Trudy to kickstart her business. Armed with these documents and her analysis, Joy arranges a meeting with the company's owner in a hotel room. The company owner arrives and attempts to intimidate Joy. He goes as far as to threaten her life, claiming that he can make her death appear as a suicide due to her financial troubles, without anyone suspecting foul play. Joy doesn't back down. She explains her findings, showing how her mop design differs from the company's patented version. She stresses that she doesn't have to pay royalties. She also points out that she already patented her creation, which could lead to legal trouble for the company due to fraud and stealing her ideas. The company owner gets scared after hearing Joy's explanation. He seeks a peaceful solution and agrees to pay her back the royalties, plus interest and fines. Joy makes it clear that she won't take legal action if the owner signs the documents she prepared. Joy's life took a turn for the better after overcoming numerous challenges. She became a successful businesswoman, consistently patenting her inventions. While Joy became wealthy, she never forgot her struggles. She took pleasure in helping others and had a deep respect for fellow entrepreneurs. So that's for today, please subscribe to our channel if you like this video, which is the most important way to support us in making more great videos like this.